right. And let's move on to the Q&A session. I have uh, uh, two, three already, uh, two questions to Miss uh, Suleiman and also to Mr. Ratani. I want to start with uh, the first question uh, to Miss Suleiman. Uh, sometimes companies require access to employees' location for attendance purposes. I think uh, some of us do. Uh, the question is, to what extent can company access the information without violating personal data regulation? Okay, is this question directed to me? Yes. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, right, so basically, you need to have a purpose of to data collection, right? What is the purpose? And as long as uh, the purpose of collecting their geotech or their location is for, uh, is for attendance and only used for attendance and not for anything else, uh, then it should be within the realm of data protection. All right, uh, but I think I uh, also would like to hear from Mr. Gatani. What are your opinion on this? When uh, people ask uh, the ac uh, location access of the employee, to what extent that is not violating the data privacy regulation? I think adding to what Mariani said, it's very correct. You need to inform the individual what is your purpose, right? Very, very important. And I think if you look at GDPR, because I just went to India and I came back just about a day ago and I did a certification on GDPR. So GDPR clearly said you must inform people what is the purpose for you to collect the data? How are you going to use it? You can just assume and presume, right? And then take the data, then it will be a violation. But if you have informed the individual, then I think you can use it, you're not in violation. Again, if you look at the Asian context, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, most of the companies, they don't even bother to tell, right? They just use, they think, yeah, you are my employee, I can do what I want, I'm your employer. But I think things are changing and more and more companies now are being open about it, right? And they tell you there is a data protection policy for employees nowadays. There is a data protection policy for external people, right? And there's also internal privacy policy. So that all explains, you know, how the organization is using your own personal data. All right. Uh, thanks both for the explanation. Uh, in the interest of time, let's move on to the second questions. Uh, this one also addressed to Ms. Suleiman. Uh, in light of the detailed strategies outlined for protecting privacy and data in the cloud, how can organizations proactively address the potential tensions or threat offs that may arise when balancing the implementation of robust technological measures, stringent policy enforcement, and fostering user awareness, particularly in dynamic and rapid evolving cloud environment? Okay, so the most common tensions I've seen, at least um, based on my experience, is um, the, the need for the management uh, to reduce costs um cost efficiency and this will then um uh, project it to the procurement department and the needs uh of the user in the company um let's say the security de department under their TSO uh to make sure that the, their environment is secure and safe right uh and in order for them to reach that they need to deploy certain uh technologies so usually, um, uh, you know, the users uh, in one organization, they will already know what kind of technologies that they need to uh, deploy in, in their um, environment. And, um, you know, and uh, on the 
uh, on the on the side of uh, cost efficiency, usually, um, obviously, management and procurement will have a say, will have a final say about whether or not they can uh, actually deploy this technology. But usually, at the end of the day, uh, the management will have a final say. Uh, they need to make the company secure and safe from potential cyber threats. So in order to do that, they will usually, um, how do I put this? Uh, they will usually follow the directions or guidelines of the user. In this case, um, the team under the GSO. So if I, if I were asked how um, we can, um, how can organization proactively address that potential tension? Um, well, they just need to work better between you know different departments. They need to communicate what they need and why they need this, uh, certain technologies, for example. Um, and then, yeah, try to communicate it. Um, you know better yeah. that's at least that's based on my experience all right yeah i i second that because at the end of the day the communication and the internal stakeholders management is a key when it comes yeah. to a very uh serious matters including this involving the data privacy and i think we got two more questions but uh i think we have very limited time i think we're gonna I'll go with one last question to Mr. Gatani. Uh, as organization embrace cloud-based big data solutions, what comprehensive approaches can be implemented to tackle the complexity of ensuring data governance, quality, and consistency, especially when dealing with diverse and voluminous data sets? Wow, this is a fantastic question. I'm sure my co-panelists will agree this can take one whole day to discuss. <laughs> I don't have one whole day. But to make a very simple answer to the question, when we talk about doing this, the very first thing you need to do is involve all your stakeholders, right? Like what you mentioned is a top-down, bottom-up approach. You need to do a privacy risk assessment, you need to think like what I always tell people out of the box. That means you've got to think like a criminal, but not be the criminal. I'm not suggesting any one of you be a criminal, please, because this is being recorded, it's live. I'm saying you think like one so that then you know how to plug the gaps, right? Because you need to do a risk assessment. Then you need to put in the relevant controls. Now, with the amount of data that we have and what do you really want to put in the cloud, I think that's a decision management has to take. That why are you putting in the cloud? What is the need to put in the cloud? And you want to put that, how have you made sure the security protocols? And please don't go with the cheapest vendor. You know, like they say, cheap does not mean good. A lot of companies... Wow, they want very cheap, get free code, take the cheapest one, go, put in the cloud. And they have no idea after that what happened to the data. So that DPIA is very, very crucial. And that's a live document because your risk will change. And last but not least, I would say, please do a vulnerability or pen test. Vulnerability test is basically see how vulnerable the system are and then plug the gaps. Penetration test means I can hack into it. Now, of course, Google, AWS, I'm not going to let you do it. But they will give you a report stating that they have done it. Now, at least you have to ask them those questions. Don't just presume and assume that just because it's Google or AWS or Dropbox, it cannot be hacked. Trust me, it can be. Yeah, that's what I want to share. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so I think it's answer because uh, the question is asking a very comprehensive uh, solution. But uh, to summarize, uh, 
what Mr. Gatani mentioned. First, uh, think like a criminal, but then the the B one, and secondly, how important the DPIAS, and of course the last one, uh, uh, about the pen test, because uh, yeah, of course some vendors are, will not allow you to do the pen test, but instead you need to take into consideration to go to the pen test before uh, acquiring the outsource vendor. One more, one last questions. Uh, I think this is uh, this is for Mr. Gatani. In your perspective, considering the broader context of cloud data and information security, what do you believe is the most significant over overarching challenge or problem currently faced by organizations relying on cloud-based data storage and processing? It's. Uh... Very, very good question. Ibu should have said there is no time for question. Mm -hmm. This is another tough question. Yeah. And again, you can take the whole day. See, uh, today there is a lot of data, right? And we want to collect all the data and then we want to do analysis on it, right? And I think what Mariani mentioned was encryption, right? So when you encrypt data, then you have to decrypt data. All that costs money. Nothing comes for cheap. Depends on the level of encryption you want to do, right? And then whether you're going to do private, public encryption, again, all of those costs come in. So one has to understand first, what is our end objective, right? But what is the end goal? Why are we collecting this data? What are we going to use it for? What are we going to disclose it? How are we going to store it? I think these fundamental questions you need to ask. And the other important question you need to ask is, in my language, the husband-wife theory. is very simple theory. The wife is always right. Every one of us know that who are men, right? Those who are not men, you know that there is the five W, so the where, what, when, why, who, and how. If you cannot answer this six question about the data that you have, then do not go and collect. Because the more you collect, the more headache you have for storage. Right? Just like now Christmas is coming, I am doing spring cleaning. I got things that I kept for donkey years. Now I'm going to throw. But mentality is simple. And now I think the law is very clear that you can only keep the data if there's a valid business or legal reason to do so. If not, you cannot keep the data anymore. You got to either anonymize it or otherwise. So that's the short answer to the long question mm -hmm. and the difficult question. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with uh, the presentations and I would like to appreciate uh, both presenters about uh, your presentation. And I hope we will endure a very fruitful discussion. I think this is the end of our session. I would like to thank uh, Ms. Marini Suleiman and Mr. Sajid Gatani for your time. And as your host, uh, as your moderator, I would like also thank for the opportunity from the APPDI. Uh, I think, yeah. Hope to see you again in the next session and back to Ibu Dewi. Thank you, Ibu Dewi.